I'd like to welcome you guys back to our family's boat shop. My name is Joe Buskins. I am a second generation U.S. Coast Guard licensed professional boat builder, and I also hold a 100 ton captain's license, which I use to operate our custom built 29 footer in the background that we built right here in our family's shop. So if you guys are here at the channel, you've been following along most likely on all of our DIY videos here lately, epoxy, gel coat, fiberglass, bonding wood together, and what we're doing today is responding to some requests from you folks out there. Now, in a, a couple videos back, we actually did a sample piece here where we laminated a couple pieces of three quarter inch marine plywood together with epoxy and stainless steel screws. And you guys seem to really, really enjoy that. Now, we had a few questions about how we mixed and chose different additives, and we actually just posted that video but um, I had a few folks wanted to see how some of our transom clamps work if we were actually bonding a piece of transom in. But I thought even better than that, let's go one step further. Before we show that, let's make some of the actual bonding agent. Now I showed that a little bit in the previous video, but it was a fairly long video and we were hurrying right along through that one. Now you guys may hear the phrase occasionally if you're searching around the internet, especially folks that are new to epoxy work or boat building work. Thickened epoxy sometimes will be referred to as peanut butter. And it's just basically that's gonna be the consistency that you're generally looking for. And so what I thought I'd do is I would make up a batch for you guys of epoxy peanut butter, and we're gonna actually apply it and show how our clamps work. Now obviously always a good idea to wear some PPE now, some of the stuff we're dealing with is very, very lightweight and can kind of get airborne. And you're probably gonna wanna wear some kind of mask or protection. The wind is blowing outside today, guys. That's why we're not out fishing on the 29. It is pretty breezy. So we're using the West Systems 105 and 205. And these guys have little calibrated pumps where you can do one pump of resin, one pump of activator, one pump of resin, one pump of activator. And you guys forgive me if y'all been watching the channel and seen some of the other stuff, you may have already seen me do some of this kind of work. I may be repeating myself a little bit, but we have been having a lot of new viewers to the channel and I'm super excited to have you guys here. Welcome to the channel, especially a lot of folks from overseas um, Europe and Australia and some of the islands and um, Africa, Jamaica, Cuba. Welcome, guys. All you guys uh, appreciate the comments. So what we're doing, we are mixing up that West Systems recommends for about two minutes or so. But for the sake of time and demonstration purposes, I'm just going to hurry this right along. That is enough for this to activate. Now, generally speaking, if you're gonna be doing this, mixing this kind of material up, I would recommend putting on some kind of a good mask. I'll try to put a link to this one below. I had a gentleman call me the other day, actually wanted to know what mask we were using. And I, I found a new one actually, or we found a new one that is supposed to allow you guys to hear me pretty good. So I'm curious to see if you guys can still hear me or not, and I can wear this mask and be on the safe side while mixing. Some eye protection is a good idea too. I hope you guys can hear me well. So generally speaking, we've got our epoxy mixed, and we are gonna start with the 406 colloidal silica. I'm gonna give one good one good scoop there you go we're going with the 403 microfibers another good heaping scoop we're going a little bit of the filleting blend the 405 and honestly folks that's totally optional it's going to give this thing a little bit of the actual actual wood color to make this stuff kind of look like actual peanut butter and i'm going to stir this just very 
gently. And it's always best to start with a lower amount of the powder or the fillers first and be sure you don't dry the material out. You don't want to put too much in there or the liquid, there won't be much liquid in there to actually help bond and grab on to the surface. Matter of fact, look at there. That's looking pretty good already. It's still a little bit on the thin side. Now it depends on your application. That's what's really cool is if you need this to hang on a vertical surface or overhead, you can make it thicker. If you need to make it a little thinner like this, you can. And then we can certainly come back and just add, add a little more, maybe the colloidal silica, a little more microfibers. That's gonna thicken it up just a little bit more. Just stir it very gently. Now, one other little trick, again, if you're new to the channel, we do have this little apparatus right here, ran the vacuum into a little box, and it draws that suction, and as you're mixing, that will help catch any airborne dust. And that is looking pretty good. I like it. What do you guys... What do you guys think? Does that look like does that look like peanut butter to you? <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. So now that that's mixed up pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. Really want to work out any little air bubbles in the material. I don't really prefer a machine if I can help it because I think that introduces a lot of air in the mix, which I don't really want a lot of air in the mixture. Now, polyester resins, epoxy resins, even vinyl ester resins are a exothermic material. I mean, they give off heat when they cure. And this is one of those things we've touched on before that if you're new to using epoxies or any resins, a lot of people make the mistake of mixing up a big batch of this material and then they leave it in a large mass. And that mass starts to create warmth, then it speeds up the curing process, it creates more heat, more heat speeds it up and you get this runaway exothermic reaction. So what I usually recommend, if at all possible, is to get this material out of the cup and on to a mixing board. And even once it's on the mixing board, what we're going to do is quite all right. Even a mass like that will, will harden up. It is quite all right. Look at that. And that allows the heat to dissipate and your material will give you a much longer working life. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we did a little demonstration piece. Again, if you wanted to back up and see some of our previous videos, we have a whole world of this kind of stuff. Another part where we're working with polyester and fiberglass, the glass work over it. This one we showed in detail, putting the piece together. Now, again, this is just a little mock-up, a demonstration piece for you folks. But let's say that this piece of three quarter represents a piece of material that we want to bond in. Let's just say this was the stern of the boat and imagine that is fiberglass or one layer of core and you want to bond in a second layer of core. One thing our family has always done is we will drill these vent holes. And when we drill these vent holes, I typically like a one quarter inch or quarter inch drill and we don't drill them just straight in. If you'll notice, these are actually at about a, say, a 30 to 45 degree angle. And what that allows us to do is as we're putting clamping pressure on this piece of material, if there's any air voids behind there, 
it'll allow the air to escape through those vents and then it can allows us to see where we need to apply more clamping pressure or less cramp clamping pressure depending on if we see what i call squeeze out you want to see that material kind of working its way out through each one of these little holes now occasionally you'll be clamping this stuff and you may have one problem hole that for example you're not getting any squeeze out in that case a lot of times what we'll do is we will actually just take some pure resin and you can take a little syringe or a little um, uh, sometimes we'll even use a roller or a brush and you can bring the resin right up to that hole and being that it is at an angle it will run down into the void behind and even though it's not a thickened adhesive if you're using an epoxy based peanut butter and you put some catalyzed or activated epoxy in its pure form down in that hole it is gonna really enhance the bonding of the wood now again this is demonstration purposes normally i would have like resin coated the back of this piece of wood before you bonded it in but um we're going to skip that step today for the sake of time i'm going to get a little bit of filler on the filler on the blade got one nice wipe two just like so got a little material everywhere a lot of times we will put a little bit extra in the corners hey how's that for guesstimating that was pretty close that was pretty close for sure now is also a good time to tell you guys how much again i appreciate you joining the channel if you haven't subscribed be sure to do so like comment and share it allows us to do a whole lot more of this and it encourages me guys normally my full-time job is being out on the fishing boat or even doing repair work but i would love to do more of the youtube content for you guys and your encouragement and support helps me to do that so now we've got our little west systems notch trial and you can see there's fine teeth medium teeth large teeth obviously the larger teeth are going to deliver more material to you guys and i like using a notch trial because it allows you to get a very very uniform amount of material on the board you can wipe from the bottom up some people recommend whatever the shortest distance is like you could come across this way that way the air would have a a shorter route to escape and that is going to be how we would do it now if you have a little bit of material left over and i do i had talked about maybe priming this you certainly could take some of that excess and rather than wasting it we could butter the back of this piece here and if you only had a small amount maybe not enough to do it in full thickness this is kind of where versus the thickest ones maybe you could use the middle size teeth get good coverage everywhere let's see here we'll be sure we'll match up we got grooves running this way i'll even match match those grooves and sometimes making two or three passes, I feel like that kind of helps work the material in. Isn't that pretty? It does kind of look like peanut butter, doesn't it? Now, the filleting blend is what adds the color. And again, that is optional. We use a ton of just the colloidal silica. Um, sometimes you'll see on the market, it'll be a like fumed silica. There's a few different names. And we're using the West system just because it's readily available a lot of people familiar with it but if you have a different brand of epoxy most of these fillers will work with other brands of epoxy some of these fillers will not work with polyesters and vinyl esters so you know that may be in the fine print somewhere and that may be something that you want to kind of uh, research a little bit 
So here we go. We're just going to, there we go. We're just going to let it fall right into place. Beautiful. We're going to seat that a little bit. Kind of like to work the bubbles out a little just by shifting it. And again, imagine this is just a mock-up piece, stringer, transom, bonding a new piece of material in. And here we have a really cool custom transom clamps that we built here in-house. Again, the same clamps that we used when we were building our 29 over there. And you would just run these fasteners up until you get a little bit of nice, even clamping pressure and squeeze out on that. But I think this is actually a stopping point for us guys. Uh, we're trying to condense our videos a little bit, still leave them very, very detailed, but not let them run quite so long. So we're gonna make another video detailing actually how we made these clamps. And I'm gonna show the squeeze out, how much clamping pressure we have, and kind of do a part two on this if you guys will. So you know what? It's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters, my fantastic cameraman behind the scenes. As always, we genuinely appreciate you guys watching the channel, and we will catch you guys next time out.